Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for contracting, on-site training, and code reviews. Now, when we last had an episode, we were talking about Emplace Back and why it should probably be your preferred version of adding things to a vector over pushback. I suggest you go back and watch that episode. But this is the code that we left off on. But it kind of accidentally raises an additional question. Let's go ahead and just comment all this out and let's do some debug statements and unfortunately we're going to have to use C out here to get a little bit of formatting but what we want to do is look at the capacity of our vector and we're going to need to include the IO stream header and we should see that the capacity is going to be zero yes right here the capacity is zero so let's go ahead and in place back one object and we can get our debug output output of the int and the destructor and now let's look at our capacity and we're going to expect the capacity to be one and it is we get the printing of the capacity is one then the destruction of the contained object now, what happens if we add a second object? Let's go ahead and add another one. And what we should see is that the compiler has done a addition of our int. So we've got this version right here called. And then it actually, when it constructs that object, it has to then copy the objects into their new location because we've just exceeded the capacity of the vector. So we will do this and we should now, there we go, see that the capacity has gone to two and then we get the destruction of the objects. So this is the destruction of the copied from object. Now you should be asking yourself a couple of questions. The first is how often does this happen and what we can see as we keep adding items to it is that the capacity is basically going to double each time. It goes from 1 to 2 to 4 and then if we add another object we should no longer see all these moves happen after 4 which we don't we just see the one object added because we have not yet exceeded the capacity of four. We've got two, three, four objects. And then if we were to add another one, we now expect to see things grow and another set of moves happen after this. There we go, all the copies, and the capacity is now eight. So we can see that the progression of the capacity of the vector has gone one, two, four, eight. And the point is to avoid all of these uh, copies as much as possible. But why is it doing a copy instead of a move? Let's go ahead and provide some no accept guarantees here. Now I'm just sprinkling no accept around. That does not mean that these are all actually impossible that they can throw an exception. I don't believe puts can throw an exception. In fact, I'm almost 100% sure that it cannot since it is a function from C. But the point is you should not just mark all functions no except just for the fun of it. That is clearly not the correct thing to do. The correct thing to do is to mark a no except function when it is no except. So by marking this as no except, we have told the standard library that we have something that can be moved while maintaining the strong exception guarantee. And by doing that, we now are able to do moves instead of copies. So this really, I hope, illustrates why it is important to properly mark functions no except when they are, because it is not just for us and for the reader of our code in the future. It is also for the standard library and the compiler to be able to do something more efficient with our code. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.